Hello and welcome to the last game of the night. It is DD once again and 4FC for the second time today as well as we'll see these two teams fighting for three points that are up for grabs for this Star Letter match season six, day number 15, match number five of the day. And of course, once again, we'll be with a three man team or three person team as uh, one of them you will not see or hear. It is K-Poptosis providing you with stats for the evening and we have got Vikramond as my co-caster. Welcome back. It's good to be back, and DD taking a pretty tough loss in the last game against Mao is kind of unfortunate. They had a good start, and then things just sort of came apart. Funzy wasn't able to keep generating those opportunities. Here they go up against a slightly less stiff competition. Mao's, of course, one of the premier Western teams right now. 4FC, sort of solidly a good contender. It can provide some trouble, but overall, considered mostly a Tier 2 team. So DD now, given the standings, I think really, really, really want to take wins where they can. And so we're definitely going going to see them take a pretty aggressive approach here. Yeah, and of course for scores, both of these teams before today were actually unbeaten, if I am correct. Let's see, DD actually wasn't unbeaten anymore. Well, that's a shame for them. But 4FC was unbeaten before they started playing today. Of course, we saw them play earlier on as well, as I won't spoil that one. But they are looking for three extra points in their pocket, and DD is not going to be an easy opponent to take them off them but it's uh, well they'll try they actually ban that already the train protector knowing that remaining. Goblike loves to play that one and we'll pick it up if he has the chance we have got a life stealer ban as well so dark seer and a wisp leaving the bed rider in the pool leaving the lone druid in the pool and the gyrocopter and we know that 4 loves their lone druid but are they willing to let the other two slide because of it yeah, that's the tough decision that they have to face here, and that's why they're. That's completely why they're digging into reserve time. Do we take? In my opinion, they should just take Lone Druid. He's frankly, as it's horrible to say, but Bat Rider is strong, but Lone Druid is kind of stronger. But they do take the Bat, which of course means DD secures an immediate Lone Druid, and they also go for Gyro. So, uh, Sakshka in this three roll is going to have a hero that has a lot of upside, and I actually like that a lot because Sakshka to me is fundamentally a carry player. So putting him on the Lone Druid gives him the opportunity to actually carry in a way that him on Darkseer or him on Queen of Pain really doesn't. I agree. Let's see what 4 of C replies to this. Because they realized this was coming. I mean, they had to, you know, that's why they were taking their time. They had to realize that they weren't having the chance to pick up the Lone Druid or the Gyrocopter. They pick up the Shadow Demon and the Kunka, though. And not just do they deny the Shadow Demon to DD, of course, that was, would be the one hero that can deny that lasso to be very effective, but they also managed to combine it up with the hero that we've seen now for the third time today, I believe, with the Disruption Torrent combination. Yeah, Kunkka, again. Uh, they played it against Empire, did not go well, but uh, here I think it has potential. I mean... They have the opportunity to run the Kunkka three. mid. They even, if they want to, have the opportunity to run dual mid with the Shadow Demon. Five and this is quite three. the combination, Kunkka and Shadow Demon. The Obviously, the Disruption is a great setup for the Torrent, and you just get a lot of damage right in there. And If they can get this Miley Kunkka on board, they do still have, I guess, what is it, a 7-2 and two record now with him? So, still pretty impressive, still capable of just blowing up and taking the game with some huge crits. Yeah, let's see what DD answers to that, because they're taking their time. It is going to be that Bane, the one support that is also allowing people to set up things. And of course, you can also try to Nightmare the, the Bat Rider if he tries to grip someone. You can try to Nightmare the grip target with the last two there, just to make sure that that is uh, a possibility. As we have got the OD as the ban coming out for 4FC. They have done their homework. They're not going to allow DD to play that one. Yeah, they, they take the... <laughs> They ban out the OD, obviously a, D a great Funzy hero lets them win mid just very, very comfortably against almost any opposition. The Treant ban, of course, pretty funny too. I, I think I heard, somebody just told me that Treant has never been picked by DD since the Western qualifiers, because in every single game, the other team has first banned Treant. It is so annoying to play against, like really. People don't want to deal with that anymore. And and rightfully so, I mean, Goblack is able to just utilize that hero to his fullest potential and um, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to have that. A bit of a respect ban, this respect ban there of course as well, as we do have the Queen of Pain ban out coming up from 4FC, they realize that DD still needs a mid hero to complete their lineup as we have the Juggernaut getting banned out by DD in return, thinking that Kunkka will be mid, but Rider offlane and still carry needed, or vice versa actually, well, Bad Rider offlane, Kunkka. 
Safe yeah, they have they have some they have options. I mean, they did run the safe lane farming Kunkka, yeah. which didn't work out well at all, but, you know, perhaps it'll work out better this time. And DD has taken out the Juggernaut, so no big Lone Druid Juggernaut pushing killing combo this game. Uh, they actually have a lineup that's pretty close. If they had taken the Jug, they'd be pretty close to Mouse's lineup in the game before, but... Here we see the Magnus ban, and I actually really like this from 4FC. We've seen Magnus less and less recently, but he still would make a huge difference in this game, in my opinion. So it's good that they did delegate that ban, rather than gambling that DD just wouldn't go for it. Yeah, and the Jakiro is the last one. Also trying to prevent a possible trialing with Kunkai Shadow Demon. Of course, you have that Split Earth to follow up on the disruption as well as the Torn. So not really a thing that you want to be facing. But we still don't know if it's going to be the safe trialing or if it's going to be a solo mid Kunkai. Every possibility is still open. Could run even Bad Rider in the jungle and pick up two extra solo lanes if they really would want to. So it all depends on their next pick if we can make something up with that. Of course, they want to give as little away as possible to DD in Ten terms of what they're going to do. Remaining. Just to make sure that DD can't really counter anything already that 4FC is planning Five on doing. But um, they are taking their time once again. They're, we're still having plenty of bonus time left for both teams though. So no real rush for either team to decide what they're going to be doing here. They take the Visage. I love this. And this actually makes me think that they probably will run a tri-lane based Kunkka. Because the, as we talked about in the previous game, the Kunkka Splash gives an opportunity for the Soul Assumption to accumulate charges very quickly. Yeah, and I, I hope there's going to be an aggressive tri-lane at that. Just to make sure that they're sure. going to be able to, to really utilize that Visage. Because that's something that I like seeing. I like seeing a Visage. But I mostly like seeing a visit being very aggressive. Remaining. Now, of course, in theory, as we have seen a couple of times, that visit remaining. could actually be going solo mid. Uh, hmm. I hope. I don't. I, I doubt it. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I won't say. I won't say they won't. But they still have picks available. Like yeah. if they want to put the Batrider jungle or the Batrider solo against Lone Druid, they can still take a lot of good mids. Like there's still a Puck available. Puck's actually not that great in this game, but he's still a perfectly reasonable mid. Like there's still a lot of pretty strong mid heroes. TA. Yeah, TA would be pretty good actually. I think. Well, they, they still don't know it. what they're gonna be up against. Like, this is something that is nice. Right. Because DD is, is keeping their last pick, of course, they, they, this is the advantage that they have. They can surprise 4FC with a mid-hero that they can completely pick to just counter the thing that 4FC is aiming to put in the mid lane. And right now they have to reveal their last pick, obviously, because it's their turn. And Ten seconds. we still have a puck in the pool, actually. And that is a Weaver pickup, so this should be Kunkka. No, well, actually, Weaver off lane, Bad Rider mid. Kunkka tr aggressive tri lane or they safe can do tri -lane. a they could, lot. They, could they do can a lot do of Weaver things. tri lane. Weaver is good in an aggressive tri lane as well. D 4FC have many possible lane configurations, all of which are fairly valid. We'll have to see after DD actually picks their fifth what 4FC go with. Uh, it, it's it's impossible to say right now how they're actually going to lane, frankly, not without seeing which players are on which heroes and the the opposing team. Five yeah, and they have still 50 remaining. seconds left. They can debate everything that 4FC is uh, is aiming to do and can just decide what the best option is. Yeah. It's and a cool I mean, draft, yeah. actually. Hmm? Uh, it, it's a cool draft. If you're able to draft something that has more than yeah. two different workable lane configurations, it gives you a lot of power as you go into the game, uh, simply because the other team's fifth pick becomes harder and their laning decisions become more difficult. Yeah, it is. Here it's most likely, yeah. uh, it looks like Clockwork either as a tri-lane <clears throat> support or mid, I guess. Oh yeah, I was kind of hoping that, it, that the Clockwork would be the uh, support with the mm -hmm. Nightmare there to set it up. But you know, in theory, yeah. the Gyro is going to be mid Clockwork off sale and the safe lane for the Lone Druid or Lone Druid mid, even as we have seen, I believe, one time before remaining. earlier this week. Or the Clockwork mid. I mean, there are still a lot of possibilities <laughs> for the DD as well, but they do end up going with the Puck. Uh, I don't know if I actually said it out loud or not earlier on. Hmm. Awkward. I think we said Puck was available. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awkward. No, I mean, Puck is a, say is a lot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Puck is a legitimate pick here. DD have a. What I, li I like this as a lineup and the Clockwork support, as you said, Nightmare gives so much time the Clockwork can just walk up, click, create his cogs, you start the battery assault, and it's very difficult for the person you've targeted to survive then. But Weaver, not trivial to catch out like that, frankly. 
Yeah, then we gotta need. And some also the other thing. I know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, just Funzie's job right now is is a lot more difficult than they than than normal because of that movement that just that the Prepare Weaver can battle. create in the in a mm -hmm. game. And you want to be able to shut him down as well. Obviously, you need to silence him. No time lapse, so you can actually kill him off. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other thing is, in my opinion, 4FC have slightly stronger lanes, but they need to win lane. A, Kunkka needs to get much better development than he did last game. Absolutely. Fast Shadowblade has to happen. Any sort of detour into Vanguard means that they've already lost. Furthermore, in my opinion, they need to pressure silence Gyrocopter pretty hard, successfully. Later on, Gyrocopter is able to clear out Visage Familiars quicker than almost any other hero is. So, uh, the, the hope is to try to keep Gyrocopter from getting too much damage on his flak cannon, so that you actually can use use the familiars in fights without them just feeding. Yeah, it looks like we are going to have that aggressive trend, and I like this. I like this a lot. So let's see who's playing what. We've got Iconoclast or Matrim playing the Shadow Demon, Miley or Strangby playing the Kunkka. Boomski on the Visage this game. In the mid lane we'll have Blumberg once again, this time on the Weaver solo mid, so that's going to be that call. And Krilly playing the Bedrider on the solo lane, safe lane. And he'll be up against that lone druid most likely. Right. Should be an okay lane for him until level 5. Well, uh, I'll talk about that in a second, but uh, I guess I should introduce DD. So we have Sokshka in the hard lane as the lone druid, going 1v1 against that bat rider, as you said, Shiver. Funzi will be piloting up the puck in the mid lane, and then that leaves their tri lane to be composed of fucking Matt on the clockwork, Goblack on the bane, actually it's interesting because almost always you see uh, fucking Matt on the bane, and then yeah. Silent on the gyrocopter. So the thing with the Batrider versus Lone Druid, this isn't that great of a lane for Batrider, it's fine. It, it's pretty good, actually. But Weaver is a very is extremely tricky to play against Lone Druid. Basically, you do have an advantage levels 1 through 4, but you have to play extremely aggressively to take advantage of it. Because after level 5, you have an enormous, huge, giant disadvantage. In fact, Lone Druid in general is very strong against Weaver after he has Entangle. You can only... Uh, Shukachi will not take you out of the Entangle. You have to use your ultimate. And then what happens if he just entangles you right again afterwards? You just die. Because Weaver is so low HP. So if they want to play around with this Weaver, they want to put him not against the Lone Druid, and that's what leads to this decision to have him mid. Yeah, he won't have an easy time up against Funzi either, but at least he'll be able to live. And that's, of course, the most important thing. Get those fast levels up on the Weaver. He'll still be able to harass a bit and maybe get some last hits, of course, as well. But at least he won't die uh, the first side of an entangle coming off, as uh, Krilly can actually harass Shokska quite a bit here on his bed rider before that bed rider, or the, the lone druid rather, turns level 5. In the meantime, this aggressive trial is the place that we're going to be looking up most. We do have the awesome combination of disruption, followed by the torrent, and then of course the soul assumption when someone tries to run away from that if he is still alive when that actually happens. On the other side, however, you do have the gyrocopter flat cannon, don't want to be standing too close to that, but let's see what they're going to do first. Here comes the Torrent first, and that is going to be nothing that Boomski can do for now. No arrest is coming off. Silent actually put in a Nightmare. Soul some people doing a lot of damage before he needed. Iconoclast will almost get it, and actually Strambi gets the kill as Iconoclast is going to be goes to his side. Will go down, fucking mad, picking up the gold for that one. But it's a one versus one trade, and a good trade for that matter. Mm -hmm. 4FC getting a kill on the opposing carry. Definitely worth trading a support for a carry kill. Not to mention it was actually Miley on the Kunkka that picked it up. So a good start to try to avoid the situation that happened in the last game. And meanwhile, uh, honestly, I have to say Blomberg not doing badly at all against Funzi. Doing good amount of harassment. Holding his own as far as last hits. And just doing pretty solidly overall. Yeah, he just has to worry about the denies that Funzi is doing. He's already got four. But, I mean, you wouldn't expect any other way than uh, the Puck to win his lane up against the Weaver. And the fact that he indeed, as you say, already he still has those last hits is pretty damn good for him to have. And he is still, he's even one ahead right now compared to Funzi. Yeah, and in the bottom lane, Krilly, uh, also holding his own against the Lone Druid, of course. Uh, Sakshka is about halfway through level 4. Level 5 will start to cause a little bit more trouble for the Bat Rider, but as long as he uh, retains some measure of being able to regen, he is actually out of regen now, so uh, level 5 is going to be pretty scary. He's going to have to sit a little back. He's under the tower right now, which is actually quite safe for him, but eventually it'll become a problem. There's no um, impassable terrain that he can really jump up on here. Now, Easily, we might see him even go for Tranquil Boots just to get that survivability going. As uh, we do have DD pushing the lane out a bit again. They tried to uh, counter ward the counter ward that was there, but they are now counter warding the counter ward the counter ward the counter ward that they had earlier. <laughs> awesome! 
Awesome, it worked. So that You're is right. them getting yeah. the control back again. Because they need that lane to be safe. Because we saw the combination that that 4FC can pull out, and that's not somewhere you want to be. Um, Awkward Cogs actually put up a fucking mat there. Um, might have been a misclick. I'm trying to miss positioning. And yeah, this is, this is, we, we noticed that this was an odd matchup, and it really is. This Weaver mid is very, very unusual. Overall, some of the choices just made by these teams for drafting were, were kind of odd, but I do think DD's lineup overall more of your sort of standard solid lineup, whereas 4FC's lineup has just massive untapped upside potential. If the Weaver gets farmed, if the Kunkka gets farmed, and they can just sort of smack people in the face very hard. Yeah, and, and while they're at it, control Silent, because we know Silent as a carry, he is a fairly aggressive kind of carry, and that could work against him in this game very easily, because if he think normally, you see him farming, and he Fancy. can... Oh, Fancy. that was a, a kill. Blinks out. And Tangles, bottom lane. That was a dead bed rider. Oh yeah, and Sakshka, you see the level 5 just Radiance makes it so much more possible to get those kills. Uh, Blomberg almost got Funzi, but Funzi just oh, beat him. Oh, nice so. deny. Nightmare coming off on Clockwork just in time. Actually, this is just action happening all over the map at the same time. At it the is. same levels, all the right levels. Of course, on the top lane, it's level 3 to get those level 2s up with your the spell that you want to use most. So the bottom lane is the level 5 for the Entangle, and in the mid lane, it is actually just a level 5, as Puck just throws level 6. It was just a chase for the rune in the end, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Puck has gotten way more denies in this lane. Like, he has 9 denies to the 0 of Weaver. So that's causing Blomberg's XP to really suffer. And he couldn't find the kill either. The kill would have been great, but he just couldn't get it. No, he is uh, wanting, of course, for that time lapse. But Funzi, I don't think he'll be able to kill uh, off his opponent just yet. As really, is really playing more aggressively than I'd expect. Like, uh, you should watch out. He might get killed again. Okay. Well, so far, please no entangles. Or, well, that's what Krilly probably says. He normally There's plays no that bear very there. often. So, you know. Oh wow, that torrent doing a lot of damage here. Boomski actually being very low on life, especially with that flare coming, and he doesn't have any regen. Is gonna be forced back. Twenty-four HP left. So watch out for the flare in 10 seconds, this fucking mad will probably try to go for it and try to get, find himself a kill knowing that that support is very low. But we also see that it is actually being dodged. Boomski going to go another way and that will be no kill. Goblack having a bit of trouble with this Hellbore, but the brain set will be there. And there goes the flare, it actually goes mid lane instead. Uh, bottom lane rather, as uh, Krilly is looking for an entangle, or looking to knock an entangle. Obviously it was Shock's got to look for an entangle, but... Doesn't get it. He, he plays does so much Lone Yeah. Like... And now the bear has boots, so it actually can chase a little better against that bat rider. It didn't have the boots before, but you can just see how effectively he's being zoned by this bear. It's tough. Yeah, I see like, he's also able to zone a bear a bit out now, right? Now, oh, but... Funzi, haste rune. Oh, there he goes. Looking for Krilly. Krilly realized something is wrong. There's a dream coil still. There is not going to be a way out for Krilly for this one. Tries to do as much damage as he can before he goes down, but. Yeah, that's a dead, dead bad rider for the second time this game. He's having a tough time right now. Yeah, he is having a tough time. And keep in mind, the onus is on 4FC. What's the courier doing there? What? Whoa! Did you see that? I think it was just to scout out. They used the courier to scout out where Iconoclast was hiding. Or wow. they just totally mismicroed that. But it felt like he was trying to scout out. And they were able to find Iconoclast. Crazy things. Yeah. Honestly, pretty impressive. Uh, overall, DD just really controlling this game a little bit more. And that lone druid, because they did opt for the aggressive tri lane for FC, they knew that they wouldn't be able to control Sakuka that much on the lone. And he really has had a great game. Like, he had the one kill already. He's zoning the Batrider effectively. Soon enough, you're going to see this tier 1 tower drop. It's actually at less than half already. They attempt to gank Blomberg, but this is pretty tough to do. They don't have dust or anything. No, I know Fiend Script yet either. I mean, that would be the one thing that can hold him in place long enough. But other than that, you can't really hope to get a kill up on the Weaver right now without detection, as we see Krilly once again running from the bear, looking for entangles. Couple hits, two hits, no entangle. Nope, no entangle. We do have a rotation, though. Goblet coming into the bottom lane this time. We'll be able to put down a Nightmare if he wants to, or a Brain Step, or a Nightmare, or either. There's the last two. He takes on Goblet before he can do anything, and this might be leading to more TPs coming in. There we go. It is the Weaver that comes. Curly still taking a lot of damage, but here comes Blomberg with the Shukushi looking no for the though. kill. Goblack is in a lot of trouble. Gemini Tech is there as well with a nightmare coming up from Goblack because he did have mana, even though Blomberg did not. And Blomberg will be forced out unless he gets a level 1 entangle, or one hit entangle that is. Taking a lot of damage, and that is why a Weaver is not up against a Lone Druid in the solo lane. Let's look at that. Oh my god, the sick charge is just in time. 
Well, I think he would have been able to run away from that one anyway, but wow, the damage that comes up from that, and the squishiness of a Weaver, even yeah. at level 7. He only has boots, obviously, but still. Oh, Funzy. Oh, no. Can he do this? Well, he I don't can't think catch he can. him. No, I don't he can't. Think, yeah. Yeah. If he, if he, the stick charges giving him the mana to actually be able to do it again was good. And they do pick up fucking Mad on the Clockwork, which he basically got abandoned to have a solo lane there. So they get a kill, but that's a lot of Weaver time wasted. And the thing about Weaver is he needs the mana to be able to keep actually using Shukuchi, even though it's cheap. Early on, his mana pool is only good enough for like a few, a handful of them. And that's a tier 1 tower for DD, plus possibly another kill on Curly. Yeah, looks like we are gonna see Batrider not getting untangled for now, but the t yeah. The Dream Coil snap is still there, and Curly goes down for the third time this game, as does his tower, by the way. And that is two kills up on Shuxka. He's doing really well on that uh, bottom lane, as we do see Clockwork level 5 can't hook shot into someone just yet. The Flare is going to be harassing a bit, but nobody there to catch up, as the TP was out from Boomski on the far end of the Dire Jungle. He's level 3, by the way, so that aggressive trial, and after getting that kill earlier on, they weren't able to be that aggressive anymore. We now have Not a level really, yeah. 5 and a level 4 support up on DD, while the supports up on 4FC are level 3 and level 4, so one level behind, respectively. That's a that's a tough thing to take for 4FC, because they don't win the other two lanes. Right. That's that's an excellent point, and Puck and Lone Druid are both just dominating. They're level 9 for Funzi. Level 9 for Sokshka, now farming the jungle fairly freely on this Lone Druid. He has his armlet done in just about uh, 500 more gold. So they're just really having a great game. Blink Dagger done on Funzi. And 10 just, minutes Blink It's dagger. 10 minute Blink is so, so fast. It's oh. just, they're really dominating. Uh oh, Krilly in trouble lane. again. Krilly is in trouble indeed. He's already trying to fly, but here comes Goblack. There's a Nightmare Boomski around here as well. Maybe trying to help, but the Entangle, is it going to be there? Nice Flame Break trying to help out. They might be able to try. To take down Godlack. Blomberg being here as well. Cooldown coming down. Silence. Deciding to mingle himself into a fight. Godlack still goes down. But as does the Batrider. And that's an, an, another worthy trade coming off 4-4 four, four FC. And maybe they can even try and take down more. But the Entangle didn't hit on the Weaver this time. So no extra kill. This is an okay trade. And I, I am watching for what Miley is doing. Because right now it looks like he's going Vanguard again. The other option is uh, the Pub Stomp special of Battle Fury, but that would really surprise me. Yeah, he is gonna go kill off the Clockwork with that bow nice coming kill. in. Yeah, that's very a very pro. secure uh, kill. He was waiting behind the tree, so fucking Matt didn't actually see that he was standing there. Really nicely done for him, and he really needs those kills because his yes. team... It's all in his hand right now, because the rest of his team is not looking to carry this game. We have got, of course, Blumberg. He hasn't died yet either, even though he's been close quite a few times. But he doesn't have the amount of farm that you would actually want him to have. And Kunka indeed picks up his vanguard right now. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, against Lone Druid and Gyrocopter, particularly early, the damage block from the vanguard will keep him fairly alive. My concern is that they're behind on levels. Yeah, I mean, this, this puck is level 10, has Blink Dagger six minutes ahead of schedule, and it'll be actually pretty hard to kill him with the damage that they deal. They really need to just focus one person at a time. Iconoclast oh, getting completely trapped. That is Boomski, last one standing here in the mid lane. He looks to be staying alive though, because Lumber comes in. Might be able to take down Silent, doesn't have Two a Gemini attack, and the misses from the low ground. Nightmare stopping him from chasing. Unlucky. Uh, very unlucky. Two misses, very, very unlucky. He has actually Medallion of Courage, which is a pretty cool item pickup oh, for Weaver, Funzie. because... Funzi is still running for this. He's out of mana. We still have Boomski around here. Might try to help out a bit. Might try, but do they have any way to shut him down? That's the question. Funzi, he can't TP out. He will go down in the end. Nice pick up. Overextension from DD. It happens to everybody, including DD. And that's Funzi <laughs> paying for his uh, cockiness. Yeah. And that's another kill participation for Kunkka as well. So, uh, nice job of actually being thorough there and killing the uh, Puck. I want to talk really quick about the Medallion Weaver. Because of the way Geminate works, giving you a second attack, being able to reduce armor is just incredibly effective with that, because both hits will receive that reduced armor. It lets Weaver really be early aggression, rather than just pure hard carry. And uh, it gives him mana regen, which is actually a pretty big deal, like I said, early on. Yeah, Weaver, oh my god, he is in some trouble. Silent. Realize, yeah, the pink comes out. They know that he is there somewhere, they just don't know where exactly. And they're actually not even going to try to go for it. Um, Strangby coming in, Blomberg trying to get some damage done up on Jolene, but it barely does anything. The deny on the tower is there, but Funzi wants to go in, gets a dream call up on two, and Blomberg, uh, Central Ward Blomberg. goes down, disruption there from Iconoclast to try and save his life. 
In comes the turret, time lapse away from Lumberg, trying to go up on Jolene. In the meantime, we see Goblack in a lot of trouble. Might go down one more hit. There we go. Strangle getting a Strangby getting a kill. And they are now looking for Shockska up on his lone druid. The torrent is gonna miss, however. But the damage should still be there. And the sticky napalm charges. There's even a lasso if they really want to take it, but they don't really want to try lasso. and take it. He doesn't so Oh wow, well, he still goes down. Okay, Soul Samsha right. from Boomski from the low ground, but in comes Fonte! And he gets a kill on that bed right there. Nice counter kill there coming up from DD as the hookshot wow. comes in. It gets the visage, and that should be a visage going down. Torrent comes in to try and help him out, though. The cogs actually disappear, and with that extra speed, he might be able to get himself out of there. The orb's still flying through, but Funzi this time not jumping in to try and get a kill because his mana is really low. Yeah, and he would die, honestly. Even if he kills Boomski, the familiar is double stun, and the Kunko cleans it up. So, good choice not to do that, frankly. Uh, and for FC, you have to say, even losing a tower. Pretty much came out on top in that fight. If we look yep. at the graphs afterwards, yeah, they're they're really equalizing a game that DD has been ahead on. Especially, I I think the kill on Lone Druid very critical there. And now we see the Shadow Blade start to be built for Miley. Ah, that will be something to watch out for as they actually smoked up, looking for a pickup. We do know that they're running right into the hands of a Gyrocopter. Silent actually performing pretty ballsy on the side of the map of the Radiant. Well, he has got one ward, but you know they can just walk past it because. They can, uh, they are smoked. Let's see if the disruption is gonna be there. Demonic Purge first. Here comes the Soul Catcher as well. Cold on coming down at a torrent. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> that is gonna be a quick kill. And that is probably one of the most successful smoke ganks that you could have with three people in your own jungle. Uh. Oh, but maybe not. Flying out of the cogs is still possible. Clearly, able to get away from fucking Mad who landed a hook shot there. Maybe they're gonna get a last two. They can. Goblack gonna be the target. Is there enough damage? The birds. They try to help stun. Nightmare on himself. Flame break there for not helping out. But the soul assumption, it will still be there and will help kill off in the end. Okay. Goblack. In the meantime, Dream Coil. Strangby. Inside the cogs, able to pick uh, off a kill. His boat bug really helping him out there. And that is a buck going down. Oh my god, that is four heroes dead on the side of DD with yeah. no sacrifice for 4FC. This is why Kunkka is a ludicrous hero. The the that combination boat. of the Vanguard damage block and the 50% damage reduction from the Coco's Rum. He was at like 5% HP with Puck and Clockwork just constantly hitting him, and it didn't matter at all, he shrugged it off completely. And that's actually the secret strength of the Vanguard, is this, when it stacks with the Rum. Second tower deny for Blomberg, by the way. Uh, it, it just makes it so hard to kill this stupid hero, and DD there, there. Uh, thought that they had a counter gank. It's, it's not a stupid hero, they're there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like Kunkka, I love playing Kunkka, but I mean... Like, I can feel the frustration of DD through your voice. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. That, it, it's very annoying to deal with. You think you almost have him, but then no, you mm -hmm. both die in the end. That's that's probably one of the most frustrating feelings it's, there. Like, Dazzle Grave, Dazzle's shallow grave ability is pretty cool, right? It prevents one person from dying for five seconds. Well, what if there was a hero with a spell that basically prevented all five people from dying? Uh, and it's not Omni Knight because it works on magic too, and it does oh, damage. Oh, they find Chuckska in the jungle. Torrent is gonna hit. There might be a last two if they need it, but I don't think they need it. They don't. Clearly gets another kill and another three man smoke gank. Successful to get a core of DD there, and no map vision coming off from DD. No words to scout things out. No extra safetyness from them when they feel like heroes are missing from the map. The only downside for 4FC right now, I think, is that DD has actually managed to take down all the outer towers of uh, 4FC. Oh, Nightmare. Up on Blumberg's second words get put down in a fiend skip, but the disruption is there. Iconoclast gets a hook in the face for his trouble, but Blumberg in the meantime, he is able to clean house. He's gonna chase down. Godlike should be able to get the skills. Chick, chick charges won't help no. out, and Iconoclast actually able to TP himself out, and Funzy dream coiling Strangby, but it looks like it's gonna be tough to take him down. The boat will come in, we'll miss everybody, but that buff is still there. Funzi getting blown up by that soul assumption from the visage. 410 damage at max stack charges, as we already saw earlier, that K pop provided with the stats. And that is two extra kills going the way of 4FC with no deaths in return. And this time they're doing exactly the thing that I said that they weren't getting. They might be able to take a tower in return or not. Blinken, Lasso, Shokska, cooldown coming down as well. But the entangle is still there upon Krilly. He's taking a lot of damage and he'll actually go down. And now it is time to run. That is still time to uh, run. Actually, silent. Is, oh, yeah, silent. You can't do anything there. He tried to get close enough with his rocket barrage, but couldn't do it. And that's actually three people down on the side of four of DD once again, or two, yeah. because still Funzy was still down. But DD they don't get anything in return. Yeah, they're constantly underestimating 
how much damage four FC can do. It's happened like 20 times. Medallion and Kunkka hitting you and Weaver hitting you and Visage throwing two of soul assumptions is enough to kill anybody on DD, including the Lone Druid. So they need to not they need to not underestimate the amount of damage the 4FC can do to them. They have amazing single target damage. And the AoE from Kunkka is not too shabby either. Nope, and it will be even more, because now he picked himself up a Shadow Blade. Looks like DD is doing the thing uh, that we saw earlier, taking a Rosha, knowing that they're behind a bit. Wanted to try and take him down to get some advantage for them on the map. Uh, maybe not yet. Waiting for some TPs in. Of course, we still have the map. I mean, in terms of the map control, three tier one towers dead on 4FC, with only one tier one tower dead on the side of DD. So they have got a lot of map control, and therefore also the Roshan control still in their pocket. And Funzi is actually going to be scattered out. Oh, he jumps into three, gets a perfect uh, silence though, but Sick. will be able to blink himself away into safety because he got a bit of too much heroes. Oh, X mark the spot. X. He dodged that. Face it. He faced nice. it out nicely. That timed. Was a yeah. Uh, even though he didn't get any kills, that was actually pretty, pretty woe Dota from Funzi there. Like, getting through that entire yeah. sequence. Yeah, it was. And he almost got a kill upon Iconoclast as well, he was forced back to base. But they are not able to take down Roshan with 4FC sitting so close to their tier 1 tower. Because they'll realize something is wrong and they'll scout out the Rosh pit. And then right now a fight with that boat, they don't have that much chance to survive through that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, did he want to sneak a Roche? You could just feel it. It's the DD 20-ish minute when we're behind Roche. So, <laughs> if 4FC pay as much attention as Mouse Sports, they'll know that this is uh, this is happening. They just need to boat in here, in my opinion, but they, I don't uh, yeah. think they know. They, they don't know. Now they know. Now they're gonna scout it out, because the color class realized it now. Should be able to realize it. Bird comes in as well, but are they uh -huh. gonna be in time is the question. I don't think so. In the meantime, Funzi already find himself a kill up on the Shadow Demon, and here comes Blumberg. It means that Roshan's still being taken down. Lasso, it's upon Goblack, and that should be Goblack going down. Brainstep still upon Blumberg, but he time lapses away from that Gatch. Fiends come straight after that, though, and he goes down, but as does Goblack. Fucking Matt looking for something to do. He has got that battery assault on, but his cogs are on cooldown. The Roshan already went down with Jolene. Shokska picking up the kill, and that's a 3 for 2 trade in terms of heroes, but Roshan still goes the way of DD, even though they lost 3 for that, even silent in the jungle yeah. in the end. But yeah. they do get the Roshan, that's the most important thing. I mean, 408. I remember... <laughs> hmm? Wow, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 408, I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty scary visit as well, as we know what visages can do if they get a bit of gold up their sleeves, and looks like the Tier 1 Tower is still gonna be something that they want. They catch out the one with the Aegis. He's trying to get away, but he won't be able to. The Aegis will be burned. Will they be able to get him a second time is the question. They don't have a last two anymore, though, and a hookshot comes in for fucking mad. But as does the boat, it comes in up on two, and Fonzie goes down. Shokska goes down. We also see the clockwork going down. Goblack trying to stay alive. Rain saps to try and stay alive, but will be forced back as Jolene already buys back, by the way. He died the three times. Blomberg with the ultra. What? Where? No. Oh, he got. That's an ultra. Yeah, and he'll get out, too. Oh, Dude, I... this early effectiveness weaver, Medallion, and now Drums is no joke. He does such good damage. And that, that ship coming down from the northwest of the river, just clearing right into Sokshka and Funzi. And how cool uh, was it that it actually was on water? Yes! I was about to talk about that, because <laughs> it's just like a, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings 1, when uh, Arwen or whatever brings the river crashing down on the, the Nazgul or whatever. Uh -huh. That's what that was, except it's Kunkka in a boat. Yeah, that was... That was kind of cool. It was... It was perfect. It was just perfect. It was. They were, they were able to actually force out a buyback of the Lone Druid, and mm -hmm. I mean... And he's, he's the just, guy with Aegis. Yeah, they killed him three, two times and then got a buyback off him. And he didn't manage to get anything done with it. He is still sitting on an armlet. And I remember at the start of this game where DD was winning all lanes. And that lone druid was getting a lot of farm. And that, er, that armlet was up fairly early as well. And DD was looking good. They were actually ahead in kills. I believe it was around 9 kills that they were sitting when 4FC was sitting at 8 or 7. And right now it's 25 to 10. That's, yeah, 4FC, that's bad news for DD. They're on an... Yeah, I mean, they're on an absolute tear. And now if Blomberg wants to go the Weaver Lincoln's defensive, I... Oh, man, they're going to catch Funzi. I think this is a dead Funzi. They lost to him. Yeah, that's a very dead Funzi. Even Soulcatcher was there, making everything more painful. It's a level 4 Soulcatcher as well. And... X on Goblack. Oh, they got him with the Torrent. Down he goes. 
Look at that damage. They die so fast. They die so fast. And, and it feels like they got this early advantage. And also with the towers, and we, we talked about the towers a bit, and getting some early gold for DD, they were actually ahead with 4k. At some point they were looking... I, I was thinking, oh my god, they're just gonna steamroll through this game and not gonna drop the ball. But all of a sudden, 4 of C, they just come back. And we see the experience graph showing how we feel. It was, it was actually a straight line down. Very solid. Then a bit of a hiccup and all of a sudden, boom, back up. 10k in favor of 4FC. And in terms of levels, that results in a level 7 and a level 9 still up on DD. With only one level 9 and then level 13 for 4FC. That's a really big difference right there. Yeah, I mean, really, 4FC just pulling it together so well this game. And especially this Miley Kunkka. I, I, I remember it from a while ago being pretty good. And then we saw it in this first game today of 4FC and I was like, eh... Not feeling it, especially not feeling the Vanguard, but in this game, he has just been devastating with these ghost ships, torrents, even the X marks the spot. And you can't let a Kunkka snowball. It's a tough situation. Weaver now with DD Rune. Him and Kunkka alone can just blow people up. It looks like he's just going straight for the Daedalus, and that is terrifying. Yeah, it is. And we, and we already saw at the start of the game, K pop gave us a stat that said that Kunkka was actually Strangby's most played carry. And they have a 62% win rate with that, so bottom tower I'm looking pretty bad. solid, I think. And um, I'm thinking that a tier 2 tower won't be standing for much longer because four heroes, five heroes rather, of 4FC coming down here on this tier 2. And we see that DD does exactly what they should. They can't fight, they know it, and they're just trying to find some farm in the meantime. Sokska farming, fucking mad actually taking the farm right now with Silent, the one that's not getting the farm. That might actually be hurting them for a while. And, he, and Silent thought, hey, my team is doing good at the start of the game. So he went Yasha. And only now that he picks up a... Um, oh, what's he doing there? Oh, what's he doing there? It's just way too dull. He do too no, he dodges He's gonna get torrent. out though. Yeah, he should be able yeah. to get out with this one. Xbox spot is on cooldown and they won't be able to do anything anymore. Nice escape by Funzi again, but yeah, I mean, they're just really struggling. Blomberg on this mid-weaver that was completely unpunished, oh, more or less. Oh, they get go black. Mm. Is there damage, though? That's the question. The amount no. of purchase is there. Here comes Silent. He does have a cooldown. Disruption is there, though. Oh, Silence. Trouble. Trouble. Yeah, Goblack is already dead. His support is gone right now. The only one close to him is Funzi, who can, of course, try to do something here. He can try to blink in. And that threat, because they realized that he was there, of course, because of the creeps, was enough to force... 4 of C back. Mm -hmm. And the good news is Sakshka honestly is still farming pretty well. So he's got the highest net worth on DD. He's building um, what looks to be a basher for the bear. So that'll be a good pickup. But the problem is it's just really lagging behind the Weaver and the Kunkka, who are just going hard in the paint for damage right now. Manta style, complete on Blomberg. And this Weaver now deals very respectable damage. Yeah, this is... I mean, we now have two cores, Kunkka and Weaver. Combine that with uh, with a Visage that actually hasn't died yet, is also starting to be pretty dangerous. He has got that mechanism for a while, he's got 1700 gold in his pocket. And we also have got that Batrider, who I, I'm not really classing Batrider as a carry, but he is that hero that can just make the fight 4 on 5, and 5 on 5 is also something that DD already have trouble with. So, right now, it is trouble for 4 of C, but if DD, or it's trouble for DD rather, but if DD holds on, Oh, wait a second, Funzi. Oh, no, he's not gonna get that. They do have a gyrocopter and a lone druid. Two yes. cores that are known for being one of the strongest in the scene right now. So if a Weaver and Kunkka can actually hold up against that, if DD gets the time to farm those heroes up, because we haven't seen 4FC been able to get as many kills as they did before, then DD will still be able to take this game. Oh, Blumberg, gonna run past Funzi. Funzi's still hunting. Oh, this and look at, look at that! Oh my god, that medallion is just destroying Funzi right now. Are they stunned? No, no not, not quite. Not in time, not in time. Bottom tower. Uh, the best by Silent the way, will get out up too, but there. Did you see how much damage Silent took from that hit of Miley? No. It was 60% uh, of Gyrocopter's total health evaporated Ouch. in one hit. Ouch. That is one very deadly... Okay, and he doesn't. He doesn't even have his <laughs> have his Daedalus. No crit. Get... That's no crit. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. gonna build the chrysalis and then the the recipe. I think. Oh my oh. god! He just missed a hook. That was not a very good miss hook. Soul catcher is there. Actually. He is stuck. He is stuck within the trees. He does get the cogs out of him. Boomski as well. With the birds, we have the sun in time. No, they won't. Interesting. He had to resummon the birds because they weren't close enough, uh. but didn't get the 
get, didn't get the uh, stuns off him, fucking mad, lives and TPs out. He is, by yeah. the way, building towards a mechanism for his team if of his own. Right, but still they're avoiding dying, like 4FC, they, they, DD can't find the kills anymore. Like you pointed out, they had 9 kills at, I think like 10 minutes or something. In the last 20 minutes, they've gotten 1 kill, maybe 2, maybe 3 at most. It's just, they're not finding the kills, as K-pop pointed out. One death between Blomberg, Boomski, and Miley, who have become de facto almost three cores. Look how high level this Visage is, and just how well he's doing on the way to his Aghanim Scepter now. Yeah, and I mean, if, if there's one death between those heroes, I mean, there's still ten kills up on DD. Krilly has died six times for his team. I mean, I mean, he's been taking the blows, and he is still able to be that bad rider that people need with the four staff and the blink dagger. He still has that. Mm -hmm. And they do get the tier 2 tower, that's the last outer tower that uh, DD had standing, as their own tier 2 tower gets a lot of harassment as well, but they're trying to take out the fuck that did that. Let's see if the last two is there in time. There's no blink there for another 7 seconds. Oh my god, that turn rate is like super slow. You saw him turn around for that dream quail. Make really stick uh, where he the, was. The thing about napalm is it slows the turn rate at maximum at one stack. So you don't need to stack it up to slow people's turn. Goblek going to die again. He's yeah. been picked off so many times. Goblek, this game, and this is a great player, so I mean, don't think that I'm like saying he's bad, but he's 1-9-3 and three on Bane, like nine deaths, and he has only boots and wand, and he's still getting caught out in weird positions. They need to keep this Bane on the back lines and not push him out where he can just feed free kills. Yeah, on the bright side for DD, the VKB is done for a silent, who is, by the way, hiding. Um, yeah, wow, and the, the bad Daedalus. news for DD, <laughs> the Daedalus is ready as well. DD okay. wanted to get the next rush, that's why they were playing slow, and they won't. I can't see them getting this rush on. They can try, but... Well, they are trying to take down maybe Silent first. He's gonna TP out, let's see if the bursts are in time. Nope, they are not. But they do... well, well, Roshan is therefore not gonna be attempted anymore. Awkward. Yeah, I mean, if... if... 4FC don't try to take this or stop it, DD are going to go in and do it. I mean, DD never pass up a Rashawn when they can take one. Yeah. <laughs> They're in. And the problem is that if... DD are actually playing really smart. You can do Bear on low ground, everybody else on high ground, and Lundra just in range. They have to do that because if they're piled into that Roche pit, Boat will bad. slay them. Yeah. It will simply slay them. Boom, and they do have BKB on Gyro for this fight, so that could be consequential. They can't. They can't get it done. Though. It's delicate. Yeah, it is very I mean, like this. If they would lose a fight here, that would cost them way more than just an Aegis. And right. 4FC might just say, "Wow, we just won this fight so convincingly." If it's actually that, that we're not even gonna go yeah. for Roche, and we're just gonna take your racks. The the problem is that you can basically forget Fiend's grip. Like, just forget it because the odds of it actually working are so slim. He's probably not going to get the Kunkka with it because Kunkka can lead in with Shadow Blade. And if he doesn't get the Kunkka with it, Kunkka will actually just one shot him probably yep. with Tidebringer. And once your Bane gets one shot, he doesn't Fiend's Grip anymore. It's not like Diabolic Edict. It won't keep going when he's dead. Unfortunately, I think God Black is going to be very sad with that. The flare hits. So DD really knows that this is going on right now, but to be fair, what can they really do? Yeah, and I mean, th this is going to die very quickly too, because the other nice thing about Medallion on Weaver is, hey, it speeds up your rush time, but Miley actually oh. is taking a lot of damage. He's nice in trouble. Hook. But if, do they have vision? The boat. They don't. Nice dream call though. It hits up on two, but here comes the boat. It is fucking mad. That's already so dead, late. but as is the Kunkka. That is huge. Jolene, Shokska already There's running away from this one, as uh, that is going to be the Fiend's Grip indeed. Blumberg trying to run, won't be able to help out. Boomski going down as well. This is a big fight for DD. Great Can fight. they get more? At least they should be able to take down Roshan with this. The buyback comes in from the Visage. They need to stop but this. No the buyback from Blumberg was also there, but no boat need and no Kunka either. So that's going to be a tough fight to take. Oh, nice flame break. Put Silent on the high ground. He TPs though. He TPs the base actually. Oh, this time the birds are in time. Silent in a lot of trouble right now. Can't get away. His team still picks up the Aegis. That is really nice. But it should be uh, Silent going down. There we go. The birds doing that job as they try to find more people to take down. They took down the bear, but the master still lives. There is, however, there is a resummon. He just used it. They find Funzy. They shut up poison, finds Funzy. But Funzy should be fine He's as out. well. He can TP out. He can blink out. He can do anything he wants right now. But Roshan, go in the way of DD. Oh! Whoa. That was, that was pretty awkward. Funzy will die. Really? He was safe. What happened? 
Flame break happened. Oh. Flame break blind into the no line of sight because he knew that Puck was TPing there. Really what? smart play. 4FC salvaging what started really, really, really poorly. Losing that Kunkka, I mean, you can't start the fight with Kunkka at 40% HP. Like, it's nope. just, it's non-negotiable because he'll die before he's able to even boat. Like, he boated, but he was already too low for it to save him, and that just caused the fight to go really badly for 4FC. It's a miracle that they managed to get as many kills as they did. Really nice flame break, multiple nice flame breaks. The one that took him to high ground, and then the Visage stuns, getting you yeah. a free kill on Silent, not bad. Now that was uh, one of the important targets, of course, to have. Quite surprised that we were able to take down Funzi. Funzi, in theory, could have... I don't know. I don't know. After Maybe the left. TP was interrupted, he was basically... Yeah, after, after the TP was interrupted, there was no hope for him anymore. Uh, we do have the bear now with the basher, with the hyperstone, so Assault Crust is on the way. I mean, that fight... DD taking that fight puts them way back into the game anymore uh, again. As the gold graph actually sticks a bit the same, but goes down a bit in favor of DD. So 7,500 experience graph shows it a bit more clear. Of course, we still have the kills going the way of 4FC in the end after the Roshan went down. So that's why it got, went back up to 8K. But right now, levels don't make that big of a difference anymore. Of course, we still have the level 9 Bane. That will make yeah, a difference, yes. That does. <laughs> that does. <laughs> but the rest don't really mean that much. It's all about decision making right now. I mean, there were two buybacks too, so that's very good for DD to DD to force those buybacks. There's the torrent. If they get X, they can prevent him from escaping. I don't know if they can prevent him from escaping if Kunkka isn't there, though. He can just TP. Yeah, yeah. he's supposed to BKB, TP out, should be able to do that in time. That was his uh, third BKB charge. He still has eight seconds left, so that's all fine. As the bear is looking for maybe an entangle, now nah, won't get it done. Sox has uh, Aegis for four more minutes, keep in mind. He didn't die in that fight, yeah. so... I actually think DD have stabilized quite a bit, and it's very effective. That was a critical Roshan win. Getting the two buybacks, too, costs a lot of... Uh, Boomski oh. is in trouble a lot, I yeah, think they the got Yeah, the hookshot hit, and Boomski... He's actually still Mad. alive, the mechanism holding off for a little while longer, as Funzi can't do anything. Disruption is now gonna be there also, allowing Boomski to escape. Fucking Matt says, I'm out of here. Bye, Funzi. See you in next life, because Funzi, I don't think there's hope for him. The flames Good are gonna blink. be there, and he's gonna be trying to blink himself away, trying to send an orb, but in comes Krilly. The blink away is there, though, as Visage still goes down. Bane coming in, Godlike dying from that one. Funzi trying to TP out with a flame break on cooldown. Won't be interrupting the TP, but will still be killing the TP with a double kill going the way of Blumberg, because he also took down a Bane. Indeed. So in the end, it was a bit of an awkward fight for both teams, but I yeah. guess 4FC, they come out ahead of it because they take down Funzi again. 4FC, honestly, playing, uh, the, just the individual execution is like, uh, like a tier 1 team right now. I mean, that Visage, keeping that Visage alive with the efforts of the Shadow Demon, the Visage himself with the Timely Mechanism, the Bat Rider, just managing to keep Boomski up on, up on the floor long enough to do a two-for-one trade. I mean, very remarkable play overall. They're really coming up with a lot of extremely effective plays in this game. And Visage close to his level 3 ultimate as well. He's level 15. That level 3 ult does give them additional uh, about 150 extra HP, which they are going to really need, as now, of course, Silent is level 17. He's able to kill Radiant with flat cannons. Yeah, and he has got 2,400 gold already as well. It's, it's about, like... What is he gonna buy next? Will he buy that MKB? I'm kind of thinking he will, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a rapier coming up from him as well if this siege continues. If 4FC managed to keep themselves in the game for this long. I mean, this Kunkka is starting to get to the point where he can one-shot the entire team of DD. Well, not the entire team. I mean, Lone Druid will probably live. No. Clockwork might yeah. actually live. But it is still, I mean, a very dangerous Kunkka to uh, be dealing with as he just, yeah, he just crits for 700. That's... That's quite I, a Yeah. Uh, he definitely is scary. I feel like DD have a chance because they are very close to Scythe of Vice on Funzi. If they can lock the Kunkka out of fights, especially yeah. if they can prevent a boat, I feel like that's a fight that they're actually pretty comfortable taking. And so as long as they stick together and they stick to team fights, a team that's as high level as DD is... I mean, they're going to have good team fight, and so they can try to force situations in which 4FC are likely to make mistakes and choke and lose their lead. Yeah, so but this is a big game, honestly. Yeah. If, if DD lose this, do they have... How many losses do they have right now? 
Uh, three? three, I believe, yeah. So losing again means that they're not tremendously likely to make playoffs. Like, they have a chance, but they're unlikely. Yeah. Meanwhile, 4FC, if they can take a win against a Tier 1 team like this, they bolster their chances so much. They only have one loss. Yeah, 4FC has actually been in Star Ladder for a long time already, never able to, to make it to the playoffs. And also, I mean, they have been, like you already said during the draft, they've been solidly performing for a long time, so they've also never been in those bottom four to have to play regulation matches. So, right. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing them in Kiev for some time, just to see if they can uh, make it happen. But it'd be tough. It would be top tough. four of a of a very competitive sixteen teams. But yeah. you know, if they play like they played this game, and if they keep, if they can win this, I will be honestly really impressed. Yeah, even no. though they're way ahead, even though they have these amazing awards, you're still playing a team that's you know considered one of the best on the scene, and. It's it's hard to high ground against a team like that and make sure that you win those critical last few team fights. Yep. Aegis has expired on Sokshka, by the way. Ah, that's uh, gonna be something that 4FC will be happy about. Um, one thing to point out, by the way, if they do like play, may make it to Kiev. I mean, we're gonna assume that Alliance is gonna be there, for example. 4FC have an advantage over Alliance that most teams don't, because 4FC has played with Alliance with the players very often. Of course, Swedes versus Swedes. Uh, I believe they actually practice the very early Roshan that we saw against DK up against 4FC or at least some players of 4FC. Uh, um, not entirely right. sure, but I mean that's an advantage that they would have against uh, these kind of teams. They know the scene, they know the players. As we mm. have got Funzi picking up a side of Vice, so getting ready for the next encounter already as I think that we see 4FC trying to make a go for it in the mid lane, but yeah, uh, they, they are taking their time. Mm -hmm. They want to, they're going for a mid game high ground approach. Yeah, uh, they have this Desolator on Weaver. So Desolator, another item to reduce the armor, uh, especially what this is going to be useful for is when they're attacking the tier 3 tower, the Desolator will really, really improve the thorough put of all their characters onto that. It's also an okay item on Weaver in general, but again, this is not a very late game oriented carry item, Desolator. It's not like he went MKB or Lincolns or something. He has gone for this, we want to actually win this game in high ground pretty soon. And so the question is, you know, how will that go? How will those critical t engagements go? And of course, yes, yes. It, it makes his little oh, bugs. Oh, he finds Bucking Mad. Look at his C. Looks, oh, he goes down so fast. And wow. of course, if you combine that Desolator with the Medallion, oh right. my god, that's even minus more painful. Minus 11, sorry, minus 12 armor. That's a lot. Yeah, and talking about Scythe of Vices earlier, Krilly now has one of his own as well. And he has a gem, so no more vision coming off for DD. As uh, we see that Strangby has got some problems with a bear and his master, but the Shadow Blade will allow him to escape. And actually, that is important to know because he's actually escaping because... Sakshka? Oh, nice bashes. But they are going to go for the master. The bird's trying to help out. The vision is there. Can they stop him from TPing out? No, they cannot. But maybe... Oh, yes, they can. The bird, they can. Yep. That's a kill. Nicely done. Kunka couldn't take him down by himself, but his team no came fast enough to be there oh, and no, no buyback because he just bought an Assault Karas for his bear and is that's this... a big important aura missing for his... Whoa! <laughs> minus 32! Right. Realistically speaking, the Swarm is not going to live for that length of time, but it is an incredible minus armor lineup with this Weaver. Not to mention Kunkka almost done with his Karas as well. In my opinion, they need to high ground right now because 50 seconds, no Lone Druid. Go, 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 go. Clear those towers out. You do have the Desolator, you'll be able to clear this tower pretty quickly. Yeah, they're, they're going for it. And here comes Silent, though. Yeah, Fortification comes out. Oh, there goes Silent, actually. Gets lassoed. Oh. And no BKB for him, because he goes down before Step he can do back. anything. He does have buyback. And has, of course, still has BKB, so that will be important. Blumberg doesn't have his Manta style anymore, so only has to hit the tower himself. But that will be just enough as well. He takes down the tower. Fairly fine. Uh, silent. Is he gonna be able to do something in flat cannon? Doing something? Birds actually going down. Resummoned, by the way. So that's no free gold going the way of Silent. They and have to get Blumberg. Yeah, he he's got the time lapse. He feels pretty safe. Here comes Fonzie with the silence. Blumberg gets the racks. Walks out. Should be safe. Shukushi away from the homing missile. Hook shot in. It hits. It Boomski. Boomski turned into a chicken or piglet rather, but fucking mad. He is the one that's taking a lot of damage. Boomski pops a Mac. Should be safe unless Fonzie can make that. Unsafe and indeed, Silent actually finishes up the job with that one as they're trying to chase down Strangby. Strangby getting silenced up. This is a dead, dead Kunka. Double kill going up for Silent, but buybacks all around. Rush, rush. That's yes. why they buy back. They that want is to why stop they the buy DD back. Rush. Yeah. And let's see who takes the next one. Of course, DD took it all time so far, and they'll be ready to take this one as well because they need to. Right? They're like this is 
we, we said that previous one as well. I mean, with the Roshan, with the Aegis, 4FC can really do a lot more. Can go high ground way more Smoke. easier than they already do. They're coming in. Here they go. Oh, Blomberg. Nice. He gets Fiend's Grip. Bit too ballsy, not counting on that gem. BKB, Flat Cannon, Rocket Barrage. Silent doing what he can, but he gets lassoed. And the damage hits too much. He goes down, as we already have two dead on the side of DD. We see Jolene running for his life. And the splash damage not doing that much, actually. The bash is going down, but the X marks spot put him back on where the rest of 4FC was. That is four heroes dead because on the sidelines, Clockwork still went down as well, and only one hero survives. It is Funzie, who is now going towards the top lane to try and push him because he knows he cannot defend his base, so he's no gonna way, try to yeah. force 4FC back by pushing the lane out on the top lane, but yeah. I don't think 4FC will fall for it. It's that it's that strategic predictability. They rely on Roshan when behind way too much, and I mean, they're obviously far better strategists than you or I, but you can see that 4FC knew 100% with, with extremely high certainty that DD were going to try the Roshan. And you can't have that actually be true. Like, you, sometimes you have to bluff it and not go Roshan, right? Even if they need to come back, they could have tried something else like split pushing or something. And instead, 4FC knew exactly where they would be, even with the early lockdown on Blomberg, they just get the great defensive disruption, the boat comes through, and then all Weaver has to do is push his R button, and then you have a full health Weaver with minus 50% incoming damage, and the entire enemy team is stunned. Absolutely true, even though I'm kinda sad that you said they were better strategists than I am. <sighs> Alright, better than me, but not, not better than no, 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 you're, you're completely right, and, and very important as well. I have to just point out that I think a lot of people lost rares tonight, because yeah. a lot of people underestimate 4FC still, even though they've been along, uh, around for such a long time, and DD, of course, they look strong, and on paper, they definitely should have taken this game, but 4FC just showing why they are such a strong team. Team play yeah. and coordination was, for them, this game was very key. They were always there to help each other out, always there to make sure that at least if someone died, well, there's gonna be return kills coming off for that. So they take their three points and they are still in the top list of the, or top half of the list for the Star Letter scores. Uh, not yeah. unbeaten anymore though for either of these teams, unfortunately for them. But uh, this was actually the last game of the night for Star Letter. We have more games tomorrow. It is four games that we'll have coming up tomorrow. 1600 is gonna be the starting day. Uh, most importantly, one to look out for tomorrow, Navi versus Alliance. That's right, it's gonna start at 1800, so two hours after the first game started. But we also are gonna have Alliance versus Z-Rage and Navi versus Z-Rage as well, as Z or as uh, IC Cup taking on 4FC. So that should be one to watch out for as well, as we know that IC IC Cup just took down Virtus Pro twice in a row yesterday for the defense. So let's see how IC Cup can do in Starletter versus Virtus Pro, who is still the number one position of Starletter Season 6. This was day number 15. We'll head on to day number 16 tomorrow. Of course, with me were two people, not just one. No, you saw the stats coming up from K Poptosis. I don't. Well, he might be able to shout out something for himself. Oh, look at that. And you can follow us on Twitter as uh, my Twitter name is uh, Shiver Gaming. Vikramond was, of course, my co-caster at Vikramond on Twitter and at Kpoptosis for Kpoptosis. And uh, any shout outs for either of you? Because I believe you have your microphone installed, Kpop. Uh, I can get some shout outs in. Yeah, you get some uh, shout outs. Shout out to you, of course, Shiver, for letting, uh, letting me co-cast. Shout out to Kpop for the amazing stats. Uh, Starlighter Admins, X34 Meg, I, I was really impressed that even with a pretty direct schedule conflict for DD Mouse, every single game wants to get on time. Huge work by all the Starlighter people, thanks to the Starlighter casters as well. Casper Velot for promoting this fantastic tournament. Thanks for all the viewers, Dota TV, people watching in game. Of course, we appreciate you picking up the ticket and setting it to the English casting. And thanks to people watching in Twitch TV. My Twitch TV viewer shout out of the day is uh, Heavy Guardian XX because he made like two separate puns that both made me laugh. Uh, one of them was kind of mean. I think he said Q pad disbandas or something, but that's still kind of funny. Well, my shout out for the chat actually goes to uh, to all the people that actually lost rares. I feel for you, but I am, uh, you know, not that sad for you because I I, I kind of like seeing these kind of upsets. It was a great upset to watch. So <laughs> sorry for you, but. You know that you did it for a right cause. There you have it. And of course, a shout out to you. Shout out to K-Poptosis. k, -Pop -Tosis. k -Pop you want to say something still? Or I don't know if he's there. Silence. I don't know if he's there. No, he doesn't but... seem to be there. Oh, well. Uh, thank you for being here. Of course, Vikramon once again. And k -Pop -Tosis. Also, shout out to him then. And um, yeah, shout out to Starlet. I have to... I mean, again, we are done exactly on night. I mean, that 
games are so perfectly planned tonight. It is unbelievable. Like, really unbelievable. In, 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 Incredibly planned from both the games, of course. Ah, Mick not working. There you go. A shout out from Kpoptosis as well. And uh, yeah, well, thank you for watching. I'm not quite sure yet what I'll do, but I'll probably be eating something, um, as that is what I normally do, anyways. So, uh, so yeah, you can stick around for watching commercials if you want to. And Benji, Teddy, Troy, and Vince, shout out to you. There you go. Totally shout it out. And um, it's always best that I want for Stalada, by the way, people. Get used to that. Uh Makes for the most explosive games though. That's why we're here. Anyways, let's jump ourselves out of this game. Stick around for commercials and otherwise have a good night.